What's going on? Leonard, what's going on, dude? Glad you could make it. Man, it's Thursday. It's been a freaking quick week, man, at least for me anyways. I don't know about you guys out there, but it's like I woke up and I was like, man, it's already Thursday today. Freaking crazy. How about you guys? Fast week, slow week, long week. You know, some of them are like that, man, but th this one was definitely fast. Glad you guys can be here today. Thanks for joining, spending your night with me. Yeah, so we got um, a couple things I want to go over. Go over the fishing uh, winter bite mostly. Um, you know, just some of the things that I've learned, the things that I've done. Um, I know we're transitioning over from, you know, summer's pretty much over. We're in fall. And then pretty soon we're going to be in winter. So looking forward to going over some of the um, winter stuff we got going on. But, um, yeah, it should be good. Let's see. Wait for a few more people to funnel in here. We got, um, let's see. Oh, especially in the, some of the news, like some good things actually, as far as like the oil spill, I mean, the oil spills, obviously, um, uh, not a good thing, but uh, apparently that's only the coast guard uh, came out and said that there's only, uh, 25, a thousand gallons of oil that got spilled and apparently it was supposed to be they were thinking upwards of like a hundred hundred thousand gallons or something like that um in comparison i know in like um what was it i think in like 1960 or something there was like million gallon like oil spill or something like that so this one was relatively small it, it's about a, a fourth of what they thought it was so the projections were um that it was supposed to be about a hundred thousand gallons, but it turns out, uh, based on the Coast Guard, that it is only twenty-five thousand. I got the story over here, um, and this is coming from the uh, made Coast Guard guy. So he has it was approximately hundred or five hundred eighty-eight barrels uh, Newport Beach. So it's a relatively small degree. And just to put it in uh, perspective, guys, like um, I found some other uh, notes here. Yeah, it was estimated to be uh, 132 gallons. So, I mean, I, I think that's pretty good. I think a lot of the beaches are starting to turn the corner, starting to open up a little bit more. So, yeah, definitely good stuff. And they got it under control, it looks like. So I just thought I'd share that guy, share that with you guys. I thought that was good news. That just came out today, a couple hours ago too. They had that projection, so good stuff. Um, check out also uh, safefishing.com. You guys, I just want to push that a little more in the news. So if you want to save sport boat fishing? Go and sign that petition. Um, get in there, try to save the sport boats. You know, they're trying to just turn over the engines and stuff like that. Um, and I, it's just not realistic for a lot of boats. So if you look, look into it, you know, give your guys' opinion, whatever you think about it. I mean, obviously, make up your own mind. I mean, I definitely signed it. I don't think, you know, those guys can really handle that right now. So I'm definitely on board. Let's see. We, we got some more guys rolling in here. Mark G, what's going on, dude? Glad you can join us. Salty, what's going on, man? Oos. Thank you. Everybody is pressing Oos if you're new to the show. It just means that they've liked the show. So if you hit that like button, press us, showing everybody you're showing some love, helps the algorithm, stuff like that. Fernando, what's going on, dude? Glad you can make it. John J. De Jesus, welcome, dude. I don't think I've seen you here before. Uh, good to see you in. Harbor was slow today. Yeah, where'd you go fishing in the harbor? Zach Riggs, what's going on? Us, welcome. Will the oil spills kill any fish? Will the fishing suck after it reopens? You know, I don't know. It, what? It, like I was watching... We're not watching. I was looking at this report from, um, it was from ABC News, you know, so pretty mainstream news site. And the only thing that they said that I've seen it said they they lost like they said a couple dozen birds. It was like fifty birds died, and then there was one part at the end that they found like a distraught dolphin that had to be killed. But that it said that the cause of the dolphin's death 
was inconclusive. Like it, it wasn't linked to the oil spill, so I don't even know why they put that in there. They were like one dolphin apparently died into some birds, but I haven't seen any evidence or anything of like um, mass, you know, fish deaths or stuff like that. Um, so that's good. I, I, I mean, it's definitely positive stuff. A lot smaller than it was. And I was trying to find where these. I had some statistics where there was like at some point. There was like a million gallons dumped like years ago. It, it was like 1990 or something. So it's, it, it this is relatively small. Good news. It, it, I guess that's the best thing I could say. I should have my notes highlighted out because I'm sitting here trying to read the whole page. It's not working. Jessica Oos, welcome. Yeah, she's not here. She must be watching it live like you guys. Missed all the dang sea dogs. Yeah, right. Why couldn't it go after all the sea lions, thin them out? big time nobody's gonna miss those yeah jesse so i don't know i mean i'm not a oil spill expert or anything like that but definitely definitely doesn't look like it i i don't think there's um i'm, I'm sure it affected it somewhat obviously but it's not like mass chaos you know like they thought it was going to be so that's really all i know Let's see what we got here. I think that was it for the news. Yeah, we got um, yeah, check out safefishing.com, the oil spill. And then this weekend, any of you guys get out and fish? We went out to so my CCA trip got canceled. We were supposed to be out on the boat with Captain Dan Arney. Um, a lot of those guys we were gonna go out there and, and the trip got canceled because it was supposed to be Monday. We were gonna leave Sunday night and then come back Monday. Apparently, the weather was just too bad. Um, so it got called, it got canceled, and they see the refund processing. So that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Apparently it was pretty harsh out there uh, Monday night. I, like I said, I trained with a guy in jujitsu who's um he's actually a commercial fisherman and he was there Monday and he was talking and he fished. And I think they fish out towards like um, Tanner and that whole area and stuff like that. And he'd he- heard me talking to somebody and he thought I, I went and he was like, he said, you went out now you're crazy. I was like, no dude, I didn't go out and they didn't work either. So um, this is a commercial fisherman and they're on, I think even, even a larger boat and they didn't go out and fish at all. So, I mean, that's how bad it was. Even, even the commercial uh, people that do this for a living, um, you know, they, they packed it in. So I guess it was pretty bad. It was pretty good. It's still sad we missed it, but what can you do? You, you gotta be safe. You know, I guess all the, all the charters were, you know, canceled the ones from LA, Newport, like all across the board, the whole little competition was done. The wife's heading out on a two day tomorrow night. I'll keep you posted if you want some fish. Yeah, Fernando, let me know. I'm actually going out um, for on a day and a half. I don't know if I leave Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I don't know. One of these days, uh, Dave Rage is going. We're going on the same trip. Uh, I'm not quite sure which day it was. I think it's I think it's this Sunday we go out. So we're probably fishing Monday. I think it was kind of the same thing as a CC. I'll have to check those events. But um, yeah, we'll be out there. But I'll still take fish. I'll double up. Give some to Dave. Liberty overnight this Saturday. That's where you're going. Yeah, I gotta I gotta find out which boat I'm on. Yeah, it looks like a few of us are. It's like everybody's trying to get it in. I know some of the topics I want to go over are the um, winter fishing. So it's starting to change, and a lot of these boats are going to stop running here on um, in October. So this is kind of like the last hurrah. You know, it's beginning of fall. I mean, this is it, guys. If you want to get offshore, I mean, you don't have many dates left. Uh, once these pelagics go, I mean, that's going to be it till the water warms up again. So this is like the last push. But I'm trying to get out there kind of one more time. Let's we'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll be good. But yeah, it looks like Fernando's wife's going out. John Jay's going out. Doug Ruben El Sueño. Yo, yo, what's going on, dude? Glad to see you here. See you on Fishy Hour all the time. Mark G, Saturday, Fish in La Jolla in South of Mission Bay, J. Oh, nice. You're going to do the um, pickle run, the solo one-man pickle run? Go hit it, man. There was sheep's head there. Salty. Saw a video around Mission Bay Channel. It was gnarly. Yeah, dude, it was pretty gnarly. So I got a funny story about that, but we'll get to it in a minute. Let's see. Take a nice kelp patty rod. Yeah, definitely. Man, I'm going to slow pitch the kelp patties. Come on. You know how I do it, Fernando. Down in SD. Oos, welcome. I think Coach is out fishing right now. Looking for the species. I was going to go out there, but I had the show. 
I think you said you were going to join him, but it doesn't look like it. It was an Instagram reel someone made over the weekend around the channel. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. You ready to go fishing? I'm ready to go fishing, man. I'm always ready to go fishing. I'm out there all the time, at least every weekend, at least once a week. Try to get in more, but what happens? No pickle. <laughs> in and out, dude. You got to do what you got to do, Mark. Yeah, don't go too far. There's still some good fish. I mean, Brian and um, Leonard just outside of the Mission Bay there. I mean, we were probably what a, they were like a quarter mile out uh, right off of that jetty, and they were slaying those sheep's head. Uh, absolutely. Des I think the best fish they caught were right there. We did the whole pickle run down the side of the kelp, and I think the best fish they got were literally like a quarter mile just off of the little jetty right there. So you don't have to go far. You just got to find the right spot. And then you got rockfish out there. If you just go like a mile, you can hit kind of that 200. Well, you were there. You met up with Oscar. He was hitting like that 200 foot water. And there was some good rockfish in there. A little apprehensive to go out by yourself. As long as you go too far. I mean, I think you're fine. Uh, I might be out there too. Like I'll probably go out fishing Saturday too. So let me know where you're going to be. I haven't decided yet where I'm going to go. You know what my fishing trip is? I'm gonna look it up right now. Oh, she's I'm gonna sure she's Monday gonna look it up. So I think it's Wednesday I think it's Monday morning. night through Wednesday morning, but uh, so I'll probably be out there Saturday if I'm gonna fish till um I don't fish till Monday, so I might join you, Mark. Uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Might hit lower. I oh Ty wake oh salty going for the fresh water, dude. I haven't done. I don't think I've done any fresh. I did one fresh water trip this year. I think caught a nice lightning trout up in Lake Gregory, but. Yeah, I'm not not really not exactly a freshwater expert by any means. And when I do go freshwater, I like fishing trout for some reason. I think because I can eat it. Uh, in Las Vegas, the bass. Oh yeah, I did fish. I did fish in Bullhead in the river. That's true. But I didn't catch anything. I was looking for striper. If there's water there, I'm gonna try to fish. So I, I guess I got a few freshwater in, but I'm not exactly a, a freshwater pro. That's for sure. That's where that black belt comes in, right? I mean, I'm like a I'm a white belt. Freshwater fisherman, uh, maybe blue belt. I mean, I still, I kind of know like what to do. I'm just not an expert. I'm game for La Jolla or Mission Bay. Yeah, check um, check the La Jolla surf. Uh, La Jolla is getting cold though, Mark. I mean, one thing, at least for me, like in the mornings, it's been like 50 something degrees. So um, the only thing is when you get in La Jolla, you're going to get wet. So, I mean, when you got to push out, you know, you're probably going to get at least waist high if you don't take any waves. So um doesn't start heating up till kind of 11 12 unless you've got the waders and stuff i know a lot of those guys do that um they start putting layers on and covering their legs because you're actually going to get get a little wet um, i'm kind of a pansy when it comes to the cold i just i don't heat up very well like i don't sweat very much um and i'm always cold i'm out there just bundled up like crazy so for me getting wet and then being in like that 50 it's been like 55 degrees it's been pretty cold so May or may not do La Jolla. Mission Bay is fine because, you know, we've got the, you can just launch with your high boots on and you don't have to get wet at all. So we'll see. We'll check the temperature. It looks like it might heat up a little bit, but just something to keep in mind. I know me and Salty went like early in the summer and it was like still cold. I had to like wrap that towel around my legs and it was like in the sixties, but it was still pretty chilly for me. I've done two trips for bass in your life twice this year. That's nice, Salty. It looks like you like it though. Man, you doubled up those weekends. I remember. Leonard loves largemouth fishing. I want to get a bass on a jerk bait. Now is the time for it. Interesting. I don't know much about a uh, freshwater. Is that just is this the time, like the transition when they go for a topwater bite or something like that? And it's interesting because bass, like, I guess they just live in the lakes and rivers, right? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> it's not like they can commute and leave. So I guess they're always there. It's just a matter of when they're biting or not. You're a reptile. I am a reptile. I've got like cold blood you know like in the beginning of the year when they were like scanning for the your temperature on like your forehead or your wrist i always what's the human body like 98.6 degrees i always came back at like nine i was like 96 97 like it was it was like way low we were like dude that, that's not normal like i know i just i always run cold it's supposed to be 88 degrees oh that's not bad jesse if it is 88 that that's it might it might heat up so that might not be so bad Got with cold weather, but not with cold water. Yeah, it, it's the cold water because once you're wet, you're screwed. You know, and, and unless it's hot, unless it's like you know 80s or 88 where it dries you off. Um, once you're wet and then it's like sort of cold, yeah, you're you're in trouble. 
Yeah, <laughs> Mark, you remember the blanket? I had that striped towel, dude. You know what's crazy? Just that, like, that simple towel. It kept me like so much warmer. I don't know why. Just kept some of the wind off, um, and then dried me off a little bit. But you don't, you wouldn't think it'd do anything, but that actually like it was pretty nice. Fall season, they chase the bait around, so the jerk baits, underspins, etc. Hard to go too far. Oh, that's awesome. I think it'd be more my style. I like that a lot more. Um, and finesse fishing. Leonard, you're not allowed. It's supposed to be in the high 70s at the coast on Saturday. So yeah, high 70s. Yeah, we'll take a look. We'll see what happens. I might hit the bay. I got to do a new, come up with some video ideas. I'm going out there. I got a new video, by the way, if you guys want to check it out. Um, it was one from earlier this year. Uh, maybe it was like a month ago, month and a half ago, went offshore with Fernando. He's in the chat. Um, went out with him and one of my coworkers, Dave. Xavier, what's going on, man? You wear the waders in the fall? Yeah. A lot of people do that. I haven't gone out actually in La Jolla. What they're talking about, guys, is like if you knew when you launch La Jolla or certain places, you had actually have to get into the surf to launch. You know, when we launch bays like um, Mission Bay, San Diego Bay, Shelter Island, or like a shallow beach launch that's protected by the jetties, it's not a big deal. You just wear long boots and you can get in the water no problem. You don't get wet. Whenever you launch La Jolla, uh, alternative is to. Uh, you put waders on so you're staying dry the whole time, which is important because if fall and winter comes, you, you just you can't be wet out there. Maybe I just should invest in some waders. You keep saying that. I know. I yeah, I keep saying that. I've been saying that all last year, it's right? Like it's been like two years. <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't know. I end up just going out in the bays that I, I don't know if I'm that dedicated. But if I'm dry, it should be fine. I've been saying that. I just gotta pull the trigger and buy some. It's not like they're that expensive, but Christmas is coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. I probably just want stuff for the boat. So you fish year round, Xavier? Sounds like it. Yeah, Mark Coronado Island. That's where I went, man. With the smallest rock fish on the <laughs> yeah, salty dude. Did you see that? There's like there's no way that fish came up and got it. Like you guys saw the video. I caught a rock fish that was literally like this big. Yeah, this huge. It was so cute. It was probably like a 10 inch knife jig, and it just had snagged that thing. Like there's no way that thing went up and bit it. Like, cause that hook, there's just no way. It was probably just laying there on the bottom. And I probably just bounced the jig and it hooked it and took it up. Poor guy. He wanted none of that smoke. But it was too late. Took it right in the side. Yeah, Xavier. You're long, man. That's awesome. What do you go for out there, Xavier? Are you looking for just uh, rockfish and stuff like that? Or are you looking for the yellowtails kind of all year? Or I'm wondering if they're around. I was looking up temp break. And it was still decent, actually, in La Jolla. We had some cold water coming up the coast, but... Uh, that whole area, like that cove in La Jolla, actually looked pretty good. Let's see here. So you can actually see it. Sorry, I was looking at this earlier. Good thing I already got it pulled up. Yeah, but La Jolla... Not that bad. You can see right here, it's, I mean, it's not great, but you still at least got some yellowish water. You know, it's blue kind of right along the coast, but then it, then it looks pretty good. I mean, compared to the bay, I mean, look at this. That, that's like low 60s. And it's crazy is when, when you check out this, look at this finger of cold water coming up. Like that's nuts. Out here still looks pretty good. You know, over by the nine, you know, stuff like that. Not too bad. So I think there, there's definitely still some Dorado and stuff down here. Looks like we're in the 70s or high 60s. But man, look at this just freezing ass water coming up from the south. I mean, down here, that's like, that's like 60 degree, 61 degree. And that's just pushing up. What's crazy is it just pushes up right into the bay, too. See it right here. Look at that. It just comes right up in there. So bay fishing is going to be tough. But La Jolla, over here, yeah, you still got, still got that yellow water. I guess Mission Bay too, right? Because that's, I think, what, like right here? So it's not too bad. At least it looks a little warmer. Yeah, I was checking that out earlier. So 
But that cold water is freaking crazy coming up south. But that's why it's coming, man. Winter's changing. Times are changing. What was a jackpot fish? Xavier depends. I just go for what bites. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, let's... Um, boat update. Salty. I haven't heard much. I talked to my guy, the sales guy. Um, he didn't say anything. So I'm assuming it's still uh, scheduled for November. I hit him up because I was talking about electronics and the trolling motor. So I want to put a trolling motor on it. And then we were talking about the like which system. So I want to get like the humming hummingbird and Minn Kota. So the Minn Kota is the um, actual trolling motor. It's the same one that Brian has, and it works with the hummingbird. They're the same company. So um, I sent him an email to him. I probably want the hummingbird with the Minn Kota. And I was seeing if they installed that or if I had to do it. So um, he said, we'll wait till we get the boat and then we'll talk about it see what we want to do. But he didn't say anything about delays or anything. So hopefully it's still good, but yeah, the spot lock, um, you know, you can get where if when it's talking to your fish finder, you can basically like on the hummingbird, say you're, you see a spot, you can just mark it like on your fish finder and the trolling motor will just take you over to that spot. So if you're in, you know, a relatively small area and it'll jog over, it'll do probably like five miles an hour, but within a close proximity, say you're spot locked and you see some interesting ground on the side scan or whatever it is, you can just select it and hit navigate and it'll just autopilot over to that spot. And then it'll just hover and kind of right over the area. Um, so that's definitely important. Uh, at least for me. I mean, that's, that's like a game changer. We went out to, um, so talking about fishing and the rough seas, we went out, um, fish perfect. I went out on his boat this Saturday. He invited me. We've been trying to do this for actually like a couple weeks. Uh, there was like no, no buy. And then he said, like, Hey, you want to go out? So this is like one of his last times he could go out. So he invited us. I know he put the call out to everybody on discord. Uh, Jesse answered the bell. So he went out there with me, fish perfect. And Jesse, we were on his freedom boat club boat and it was pretty cool. And it was, and he was even rough, rough that on Saturday. And this was probably like a 22 foot boat. And we went out uh, San Diego Bay and we were going out to the nine. That was the original plan. Uh, see if we can get on some Dorado or something like that. Just see if they were there, but uh, it was pretty rough. I mean, it was like, you know, at one point he, we like jumped the boat a few times. It was like the rods, everything came crashing down. So we got about halfway there and do those swells were huge. So we decided, okay, let's not go to the nine. Uh, it's a little too rough. So we turned around um, and basically I took them over kind of where we went for the pickle run, just outside the kelp there. And it was like a minefield dude with like all the lobster pots. Um, just freaking all over the place. It was still good. We got on um, some sheep's head. I think I caught two keepers. I caught a nice sculpin, uh, some other rockfish. Uh, Jesse caught some rockfish. Uh, fish Perfect got on some fish. So that was pretty cool too. But one of the hardest things was like staying staying in place. The wind was so strong in the, in the current. Roman talked about this. So the, those of you guys that don't know, check out Fishy Hour. Uh, Roman talked about this in his last show, basically the drift and the wind. And we were in a boat um, as opposed to a kayak, but it's still the same principles apply. And we kept drifting like fast. I mean, probably almost like I would say close to a mile and a half, two miles an hour. It was pretty quick. So we'd pull up, we start a drift, and then we'd wind up. We were just like, like dodging lobster pots and we kept casting. And like, so we'd, one person would be back in the front watching for lobster pots. So we didn't cast on them. And then the other person would go and then we would we'd back up because we found this like nice spot where every time we drifted, we were getting bites. So we got on them. And we would go back and drift, get a bite, go back and drift and get a bite. But man, the, it was one of those trips where like on the boat, I'm like, I was just sold on the spot lock. You know, I was like, I, when I get my boat, like I have to get this. I know Brian has it, um, but that is like, it's almost a necessity. Cause if we could have just hovered on that spot, anchored on that spot, like sat there, I, I, we, we would probably would have just dominated, but we had to keep going around and going around. We couldn't anchor. It was like too much lobster pots. It was, uh, the kelp was really thick, uh, but it was pretty, it was pretty rough. We had the live bait. We went and picked up a scoop and we brought, he fish broke awesome, dude. He brought like shrimp. He brought squid. So thanks again for taking us out, dude. That was really fun. Um, and you know, what was funny was I caught one sheep's head and something else. And then I think we were running low on squid and guess what? I busted out guys, not the slow pitch, not anything like that. I caught keeper sheep's head on 
the freaking the gulp squid, uh, the new penny color. And it, it was pretty crazy because I was like, man, I'm just going to try it. It was one of those things that I was just going to experiment, right? Like, I wonder if they'll eat the gulp shrimp. I've had this package in the back of my you know, tackle box forever. And I rigged one up, same style, same rig. It was the three-way rig, uh, whatever I was working. And I threw one on and dude, they were, de they were destroying this thing. They were eating the gulp shrimp. Uh, sheep's head too. Sheep's head. I think I got a uh, legal sculpting on that thing. And so it was pretty cool. Just so you guys know, the sheep's, the sheep head will eat the gulp shrimp. It surprised me. I was like, I, I don't think they'll eat this. They're, they're not that dumb. And what's crazy was like, they were biting this thing and eat like this thing was destroyed. And I could feel them. You know how the sheep's head do they, they eat and you feel them pecking at it because they eat it. They kind of go around it and then eventually they do it. But they were doing the same thing with the gulp. I'd feel the tug, little tug again. And they kept coming back for it. And finally, dude, we were catching them. I think Jesse was getting bites on it too. He had a couple of uh, the gulp shrimp on his thing. And like I pulled them up, dude. The tail was like chewed up. The end was. So they were eating this thing, uh, which I thought was pretty crazy. So I don't know if anybody's tried that, but they, they do work. It says I ate sheep head this weekend off of the gulp shrimp and it was delicious. So. Thumbs up on the gulp, guys. Give it a shot. I was surprised. Like I, I didn't think it was gonna go. I was like, there's no way they're gonna go for this thing, but it works. Gulp shrimp, man. You just rig it, rig it like you normally would. Uh, put it up on the, like I said, three way, three way swivel. Carolina would probably work too. But um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. So yeah, we went out um, Saturday and we're getting beat up for sure. So. Um, I see what everybody was talking about this weekend, but we gave it a shot, man. We tried. We still got some fishing in, so it was cool. Jesse was what waiting in December. Let me catch up on the chat here. Do you keep ice in your catch bag in your kayak? Mark, I actually use um um ice packs. Uh, the reusable ice packs. Dude, those things are awesome. I probably like the little small ones, and I probably throw like four. I don't use the hard ones that are like, um, you know, when they're in like hard plastic containers, I use kind of like those soft ones that come in soft plastic bags. I mean, they get hard when they freeze, but they're just like squares, probably a one by one square. I throw like four of those in my bag uh, and they work. Dude, when I pull the fish out at the end of the day, they're like, the fish are like frozen. And what I like about it is you can keep like two on the bottom. And as you throw a fish in, I just stack the ones on top. And then when I get another fish, I just like, I keep throwing the ice packs on top and then like the two on the bottom or you could put like two on the side, but they work, man. And then you just wash them off. So at the end of the day, I wash my bag out with those plastic um, ice packs, just hose the whole thing down, throw them back in the freezer and then just use them next time. So that's what I use. Then you don't have to worry about the water either. You know, it's not melting, um, anything like that. So works for me. You can give it a shot and you don't have to stop and buy ice since they're already in the freezer, you know, just one less thing you have to get in the morning. You don't have to go stop at 7-Eleven or whatever it is and get a bunch of ice. Just throw the ice packs in and it's been good. But I also use that um, like that backpack style behind my seat. I don't have that one in front. So every I have like a taller vertical one. It's probably only, it's maybe it's three feet wide, but it's long and it's like four feet long. But it's like a backpack. So the fish kind of stack into it real narrow. They're not like spread out. So I think it's easier to get the ice in or the ice packs. Cause when they sit on the bottom, the fish stack up vertically. Cause it doesn't open very much. Like it's not very wide. So the fish, like they pile up in a, in a row. If you've got one of those big ones that goes on the nose of your kayak or like an ice chest, it might be a little different and the ice probably might be better in that case. But, um, I don't know. Like I said, just the, the fish bag that I have, it, it works perfectly. with just using the straight up, um, ice packs. But ice is good too. Just one less step. Catch up here. You were gonna starve to death while I was gone. Why? Because you are gonna cook for me. You are gonna be here to cook. For oh, me. you're gonna starve to death when I'm gone. Yeah, that's true. I have a wife that doesn't cook. I do dishes though. She does do dishes though, so I think that's a fair trade. Let's see. Gold sandworm also works. Oh, salty. I didn't know that. Nice. Dude, the sandworm works for everything. I, Brian was talking about that, though. Like, you guys want to slay or if you guys are having trouble getting fish, just throw a gulp on, dude. That's like, 
they bite those things like crazy. Pretty funny. Dave Rage uses frozen water bottles. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's perfect. Same thing as like a, an ice. Same thing as ice packs. That's good. I noticed your backpack. I have the one that goes on the bow. But I stuffed mine behind my chair on the pickle run. Really like that much better. Yeah. What Mark's saying is I don't keep my ice chest on the front or my ice bag. I've got a long, narrow one. And I put it just right behind my seat. Um, and it's got it's even got the straps like a backpack. So sometimes I'll even just like um, strap it to the seat or put it back there. But it's out of the way. And then you just reach over and zip it, throw them down. I like it. I've never used the bow one, so I don't know. I, I can't say whether that's good or not. But the one from the back, I mean, seems to work. I like it a lot. Yeah, frozen frozen water bottles. Yeah, Leonard, crazy how <laughs> good the golf work. It's true, dude. It's like you don't want them to work right because you're like just this mass produced big company bait, you know, big corporation bait. You're like, oh, these things, but they do, man. They slay that juice. It's the juice or something. It's the scent or the taste or the texture. But you know, that's where I think you go into scents, right? I mean, I think those are definitely a product of the scent for sure. They've got like this. Once that scent gets out there, aside from that, because the, like the form, they don't look that great. Like they're not like some super high fancy plastic, but it's some revolutionary look. Like they're not even, they don't have detailed colors or eyes. It's just like a, a, a straight piece of plastic. You know, sometimes they're two-tone colors or whatever, but even the mold isn't, you know, like that great. Cal, what's going on, man? Ooh, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, so the CCA trip was canceled. So I am going offshore this week. The winter bite. So yeah, that's what I want to talk about, guys. <clears throat> winter bite in the bay. So we got the changing water temp. Um, and what to expect. So like one thing is I, I'll, I'll fish all year. Like all last year on the kayak, I fished still every single weekend. I don't think I took a weekend off. And there's a couple things. There's the offshore change in the water, and then there's the the bay changes, um, fish change, the type of fish change, uh, what you can legally catch and not catch, um, and then what to expect. So I'm just curious to see what your guys' take on this is. So when it comes to the bay fishing, obviously it's like the the spotties they stay right. They don't go anywhere. The halibut stick around. The spotties they don't move around like the pelagic fish offshore. But in my experience is that they at least according to like last year for example um they tend to go inland in the bay i don't think um they stick around in the mouth when it gets too cold whenever we fished or whenever i was fishing um you know like liberty or uh what's that uh, like the kellogg area <clears throat> it just didn't really have much luck um as far as catching like spotties in particular um or even halibut when we were in that that area that's open by the mouth. But whenever we moved back and whenever I went to like um, Kellogg or Glorietta, it seemed to slay a lot more fish. So I don't know if they move back because it's, you know, it's colder. I mean, it's warmer or if it's the cold water that that's pushing them back. I can't really say for sure. I think it's, um, it's more conducive that they move to the rear of the bay to try to stay warm. At least that's my theory. Um, you know, I haven't done and too much study on it, but during uh, during the time of the winter, that that was where we we crushed it. I know, and a lot of people went out there too, um, with me a few times, and we always did well out there. And I think it's because it's. And I know salty. Remember, we went on that trip where we just couldn't find them. It was like the weather was starting to turn, um, and the winter was here. And we would normally fish that Liberty area. That was kind of the go to spot. That was like the MMFC like twenty twenty zone was right there in Liberty. We'd fish Liberty. We would do the fuel dock right there and then we'd usually go, go over to like valley high and america's cup and you pretty much just died and it was just so hard to find fish you'd get like one two fish and then salty events eventually went um you know we went down i don't know how how you would position that we just went inland of the bay um i guess you could say we went eastern east southeast into the bay deeper into the bay and we did really well and one day we were out there and we fished like 12 hours or something like that and we're catching a lot of fish so i started going deeper and every time i went in deeper in the bay during the winter um the fishing got a lot better and then i would try basically liberty and that area again and i, I just couldn't find them it seemed to shut off so for whatever that's worth um 
that's just some anecdotal evidence of what I found. I think if you guys are going to fish coming up in the winter and you're having a hard time, I would go inland. I think Jesse did really well during Spotty Bowl, right? He won one of the Spotty Bowls, and I know he was down in there too, um, further into the bay. So check that out, guys. If you're having trouble and you're struggling coming up winter in the bay, uh, go a little more inland uh, and see what happens. I, I think you'll have a little bit, a little bit better luck than fishing that mouth. I think it just gets too cold, especially when you look at that temp break when that cold water was coming in. I don't know if it's just they, they can easily just swim a little bit further in and get to the warmer water. Um, it's hard to say, but at least it's, that's just something that I've observed and something I can help you with. And then, um, you know, when you're going out offshore, obviously the pelagic leave. So that's why I was saying this is like your last chance to really go out and get on some fish. Because once that water turns over, once it's out of 70 degrees and you're down into like the early 60s or low 60s, like that's pretty much it. The Dorado go, well, the bluefin kind of stick around because they like the colder water, but they're going to follow the bait. And when the bait goes and the water temperature changes, like they're gone. They're migratory fish. So the yellowtail, the Dorado, the yellowfin, they're just going to go south. They go south closer to the equator uh, where the water's warmer and they're going to go feed down there. And then we don't see them again until summer. So then, you know, all you really have left is um, pretty much rock fishing and then flatfish fishing. Uh, but one of the things with the rockfish is you got to really know your um, your laws as far as the species go because it gets confusing. Once December 31st hits all the way to March, so, you know, January, February, up until March 1st, you can't fish rockfish. Um so the sheep's head, the whitefish, the cabazon, the rockfish, lingcod, that all closes down. So you don't have the pelagic fish in the winter because they're all gone. And then you don't have the rockfish either or the sheep's head. So you guys got to really understand that. That's why it gets tough in the winter as well, because you're really limited as what you're able to fish. You can't just go out there and say, oh, well, it's, you know, it's January. Let me go out and crush some rockfish in, um, out in La Jolla or something. You can't do that. You can do the bass. <clears throat> so the bass are open. Spotted bay bass, barred sand bass, calico bat, get bass you can get. Even, but even the calicos, I think, are tougher to find uh, during the winter. Uh, but one thing that is open, interestingly enough, I was looking through the um, recreational, the California uh, recreational uh, fishing regulations for Southern California. Uh, the sculpin you can still keep. So according to them, they're, they don't count the sculpin as the rockfish or the closed um, closed fishery. Uh, flatfish you can keep. So you can still do halibut. You can still do sole. Um, you can still do like the sand dabs. Basically, any of those flatfish are still fair game. So once January comes, you've basically got flatfish and you've got sea bass. Uh, white sea bass, I, th I think you can still do. Um, but you just got to remember that. So no rockfish after, uh, December 31st. So we're losing the pelagics <clears throat> coming up. So now between then and the end of December, you guys want to go out and get your rockfish. So get your rockfish fishing in because they're really going to put a hold on that and pump the brakes on it. I don't know why they do that. I don't know if it's, I've heard conflicting. I've heard conflicting reports. Some people say it's when they breed. Or it's when they mate. Other people are like, no, nah, they just <laughs> they just do that. So they, they give them a rest, I guess. So they just take a pounding the whole time, which might might make sense because if you if you can't go after the game fish, whatever you're going to go for, you're going to go after the the rockfish, and there's nothing else to do. So, and it's funny once kind of the rockfish starts opening, March, April, like then some of the those topwater fish start coming back. So that is interesting. So with that being said, you guys got to step up your halibut game. Uh, if you guys want to be fishing big fish, uh, big game fish, the the spotted or the barred sand bass are always out there too. So uh, I think those are good kind of big fighting fish. Some of the bigger fish you can catch, the white sea bass, but um, halibut. So I recommend I caught two legal keeper halibuts this winter. Um, one I think was in January, and then maybe one was in even February or March or something like that. So. I think that'll be a perfect time for us maybe to go out or, you know, start getting your halibut game together, start sharing information. I might do a video or just, you know, little knowledge I have on the halibut fishing 
and see if we can get on them because, like I said, it, it, we're going to start running out of options pretty quick here. Of course, you could always go to the Bay. I mean, spotties are always going to be there. Um, and if you're going to go for the spotties, I recommend going a little bit deeper, you know, deeper in the bays. And then just get the rockfish now, guys. So if you're going to do a trip, get out there this weekend, maybe next weekend. Go get your last hoorah down in Mexico because uh, once those fish leave, they're gone. So otherwise, start doing rockfish. Go hit La Jolla while you can, you know, if you're, if you're still cool with the weather or get on a boat. Um, actually, you don't even need to do La Jolla. I mean, just, you can do the pickle run. You can launch from Mission Bay and then go down to the kelp. Or you don't even have to go that far, right? I think you can just go outside the jetty from Mission Bay, go south or north a little bit, and you'll be able to get some rockfish. So just wanted to pass that along. So remember that. But now we've got a limited time, so the clock's ticking on that stuff. Um, and then we're going to be stuck with bass bass and flatfish. So if you can't catch uh, sea bass, barred sand bass, spotted bay bass, uh, and halibut and stuff like that, um, you're not going to be catching many fish this, this winter. So time to get on it. Yeah, I'm curious what you guys have, your tips too, as far as winter or how you change or what you do. Let's see what we got here. Eric, what's going on, man? Glad you could make it. I thought you started, I thought you gave up on us. Not you the big business owner. No more shows for you, man. All work, no play. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Oh, you, you are still at work. <laughs> Well, it looks like you're watching the replay. So, Eric, thanks for watching the replay. Man, that, that business owner life, man, 24-7, nonstop. But it's good. I think in the end you'll like it. Once you get over that hump, man, hopefully you get there. Towards downtown. <clears throat> Night is better in the winter. Um, I don't know if I fished any nights. Well, maybe we did. I think we all went out. I feel like that was late October, though. Last time I did like a night run that late in the winter. I know we did one in the summer here, but yeah. So Salty saying night fishing better in the winter. That's interesting. So it looks like you, you decide on uh, Mission Bay, Mark. I think that's a good, good one. Looks like Cal's going to go out with him, too. Callum Mark, is it on a Mission Bay or what? It sounds like it. That's good stuff. Try to meet up with you guys. I still struggle to struggle to catch halibut. Yeah, Zach, the, the halibut are um they're tricky. Um I the the most luck I've had on halibut um is definitely uh the A rig. So actually all winter, I think the A rig. A rig is kind of like the money bait. Um, I think for winter, you just drag that thing around. You're going to catch fish. If you go to Glorietta um, or not Glorietta, what is that? Or I guess that's Glorietta Bay, right? By the Coronado bridge. Like there's those first set of moored boats right there. If you drag an A rig through there, I, I guarantee you, you'll catch fish. Um, and then through the docks, that's how I got that, um, that big 32 inch halibut. It was like 13 pounds was actually on an A rig. I use a rig. And I use grubs, curly tail grubs. Whenever I get the legal or the big halibuts, for whatever reason, they're on the curly tail grubs. Either white, I like that green, like that pumpkin green, or the white grubs uh, on an A-rig. Just put that thing in the bottom, even if you almost got to drag it. So don't be going too fast. Put some weight on it and just almost drag the A-rig down. And I think you'll get bit. It's just patience with the halibut. You just got to cover a lot of ground. Like you can't. You don't really drop. I mean, you you will get one, right? Like if you're fishing the Ned Rig, if you're fishing for spotties, eventually you will catch a halibut. But if you want to target the halibut, I'd recommend just a rig with curly tail grubs and just cover a ton of ground. They're in the docks. The two legals I caught last year or this year were both in docks. They both came on docks. They weren't out in the middle of the ocean. They weren't out in the <clears throat> the flat sand beds that everybody talks about. They were like right on the edge of the docks. Both trolling the a rig. So what I do is I just start at one end. I pull a ton of line out. I go all the way as far as I can. And then once I reach some point, I know I still got like hundreds of feet of line out. I just reel it in slow, just slow off the bottom, drag it. You're going to catch a lot of spotties in between, but um, that's kind of your best bet for a hell of it. If you really want to catch one, 
uh, Zach, like if you just want want a halibut, I get get some live bait. I, I mean, that's like the probably the best way to do it. Um, either catch some small mackerels, lizard fish, or even go get like a half scoop or like a kayak scoop. It's not even a half scoop from the bait barge. Uh, then you can go out towards like if you go to the bait barge, get a little bit of bait, and then you kind of go out towards like the power lines where it's like soft and sandy. There, it's like kind of right behind, right in front of the power lines, uh, in between there, and like the is that like the ammo dock or something like that? Um, just live bait it there. Do you throw like a Carolina rig um, with a live fish, and you'll probably get bit. Lizard fish. I haven't caught one on a lizard fish. Uh, coach tells me that's like that's the money bait. <laughs> apparently i don't know but if but if you ever catch one uh like it's a small enough bait fish throw it down on a like a dropper loop or a carolina rig um and then that, that's probably like the best way to go if you like you if you want halibut go live bait they're predatory fish they like they like the bigger baits um if you want to catch an artificial like you don't want to deal with the bait i recommend a rig that's what luck i've had works for me and the curly tails i've used the um the kalins too uh kalin curly tail and i think the the aa aa baits uh was the other one i caught them on but both the curly uh and then underspin as well and i know works really well i haven't caught one on the underspin but i know a lot of the guys do uh, just because it's the same principle you want to just cover a ton of ground at the bottom and those are great uh great bottom baits and you're going to get a lot of spotties, I think, too, in between. Probably for every halibut you catch, you're probably going to pull up like 10 spotties. So it, it's fun catching the spotties as well. I mean, because that A-Rig slays the spotties under spin wheel, too. But uh, that's sort of my advice. I mean, that, that's kind of my what's what's worked for me in the past with halibut. And then you could always live bait it, too. I remember the one by downtown. Yeah, dude. Oh, you were there on that trip. Yeah. A-Rig, man. Just I was just dragging the A-Rig through the docks and just crushed it. I don't even think I was looking for halibut. Um, I was probably just going for uh, spotties and just drag it. But you just drag the A-Rig through, like anywhere through the bay, and you're going to catch something. Like you're going to get a sand bass, <laughs> the halibut. The A-Rig will catch anything. Just run it, dude. You'll get one. Yeah, you say you really want one. You can do it. You just focus on it. I think you have to take a day where you're like, look, I'm not going to go after spotties. I want to catch a halibut and then really focus down. Maybe we'll do like a halibut trip. Obviously, the secret spot you can go to. There is halibut there. I don't I don't think a lot of big ones. Mark G caught a legal one there uh, this summer. Uh, I think I caught two halibut that day. N neither of them were keepers. Um, and both of those, when we went out earlier in this year, it was like early summer. Those were both on a rig too. So I, if you want to go artificials, I would just say a rig for halibut. There's a million things that'll catch them. Those aren't the only things, but that's just what I've had a lot of luck with. I think that's just hovering the ground. Yeah, try it out next time you go. Still looking for that legal alley. Man, Leonard. Yeah, they are they are tough to find. They're not you're probably gonna catch a, a ton of short halibut before you catch a legal. Although I don't know how many Mark caught before he caught his legal. That might have been his first one, which is pretty cool. Underspin, salty, underspin, A rig both work. Fluke got me that one for spotty. Well, dude, yeah, you caught that beast. How'd you run the fluke? Like Texas rig? Salty? Or how'd you do that? Martel Parks, how's it going, man? Glad you could join. Thanks. Would launching from the military work launching from the military base work better? Um, which military base? I'm not too familiar because I've never launched from a military base. <laughs> uh Old Town Topwater 120. Oh, cool. We got a lot of guys in here that, that fish with that um that old town. Did you see his question about scoring his rod after ocean fishing? And, um, oh, so, oh, Martel, man, you're, you're in here chatting up a storm. Nice to see you, man. My wife's telling me. Sorry, dude, I, I get talking and I, I miss the chat. I uh, haven't taken my cat in the ocean yet. Uh, how do you get out to the bait bar? Okay, I, I see the chain now. And he said, should I spray my rods after I fish in the ocean? You don't even want a halibut. You want a sheep's head. Yeah, dude, these are the guys to talk to. Um spotty let's see should i spray my rod after i fish in the ocean new to ocean fishing um yeah i would spray your rod rod don't um you can hose down the rod as much as you want i take it out and just blast it with a hose 
when you get to the reel, just go very soft water with the reel because you don't want to spray any. If you get like sand or anything like that, you don't want to spray it back into the parts. Um, and then it gets crunchy, like in the reels or in the spindle. Um, you don't want to blast the sand inside the gears if you get sand, but just rinse it down. Blast the hell out of the rod. I mean, hose that thing down. Do the handle too. But when you get to that, get to the reel. Just be gentle with it. I usually just put on like a steady stream, rub it a little bit, you know, like put your hands in it, kind of like wash it, get it over there. Um, but yeah, definitely don't don't blast the the reel. But go go ahead and cook the rod on that thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, Martel, man, if you want to go out, um, let me know, dude. A lot of these guys too. They're great fishermen. You know, we can get you on some sheep's head too. We can go out to, um, we just did a pickle run. If you want to watch one of my old videos, I think we're planning on doing another one. Uh, I think sooner probably rather than later. So get a hold of the group. Check out Fishy Hour, um, Martel. You can get a link to on the Discord that we're all a part of, uh, the Mad Max Fishing Club. Uh, we do a lot of the fishing together. We go out in groups. And even if you're not part of the, the club and you want to come out, you know, hit me up on here and you know, we'll get some times and dates together and stuff like that. Um, the bait barge, bait barge is pretty easy um, to get to because it's, it's really, it's the only one out there. I get to it from, um, usually the guys launch from shelter Island or Kellogg. I usually launch Kellogg. And basically if you launch off of Kellogg beach and you just hang a right, basically you just go straight and you're going to hit it. It's maybe it's a mile down or something like that. But just do a beach launch or um, Shelter Island is is a good one too, because you can just launch off the um, the boat ramp. So a lot of the guys will launch off the boat ramp. Um, just bring your kayak down, throw it on the wheels, just go in between the boats. Be careful if it's not busy, and then just hop on and just paddle out. Um, and then you can park there too, so it's a nice parking area uh, right there at a lot of the big uh, the boat launches. Same thing with Mission Bay. Uh, we launch out of Dana Landing a lot. Same thing. That's just a boat ramp. So we park, make sure you're parked in a, there's usually specific parking, um, for vehicles without trailers though. So just make sure you keep that in. But yeah, man, you haven't taken your kayak in the ocean. I, I think you'll like it. The bays are good. The bays are chill. So I'd probably start off with that. Although if you've got experience in the rivers and stuff, sounds like you do or lakes, um, the bays, they'll be pretty comparable. You get some big swells every now and then, but it's, it's not too bad. And then eventually you can go offshore, um, where we go out for the sheep's head offshore and, and La Jolla and stuff like that, but definitely start in the bays. But yeah, dude, these guys, they got, they got a ton of knowledge, man. They, we got some killers in here, so I'm sure they'll, they'll help you out a ton. Listen to them. They catch fish. <laughs> yeah. I see Cal already jumping in there. Hell yeah. Last year, Cal caught one at the secret spot. Yeah, dude, they're there. The halibut are at the secret spot for sure. Where's the secret spot? We can't tell you where the secret spot is. Uh, it's not a secret spot at all, but we I think that's just how we get people to go fishing with us. So they think they know where the secret spot is. It starts at the Z. <laughs> G Smith was asking what time of year is best for bluefin and yellowfin. D Smith, what time of year is the best fin for bluefin or yellowfin? You know, typically bluefin usually come around so this was like kind of an oddball year it's an interesting question the bluefin typically come in early summer and spring the bluefin like the colder water and they normally don't correlate with the yellowfin um usually the bluefin come in and you can get um what's it june kind of end of may june is kind of like the hot hot bluefin time they, they actually like the colder water um and then typically the yellowfin will come in when the water gets warmer the bluefin leave. They don't like the warmer water as much. They go out to the cold water. But then when the water heats up, um, the yellowfin come in with the dorado. So typically yellowfin fishing is like July, like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, um, September, October. I mean, usually there's, I mean, that's what I'm going out for. We're going to go out there and probably hopefully get on some yellowfin or dorado uh, this weekend. It's, it's starting to kind of wane out a little bit, but yeah, kind of that July, August, September, that's usually your your um, yellowtail, yellowfin, you know, the mahi-mahi or dorado, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the bluefin, they come around usually early summer. Now, this year, for whatever reason, the bluefin have stuck around. Um, 
I I don't think any of us have like seen the bluefin stick around. So you just you don't know. Uh, they've still been at Tanner Bank, um, which is about 50 miles offshore, but still to be able to go out there and get them is, is pretty rare. Um, I had a video where I was I launched out of Carlsbad, and I think that was in July. Um, I just launched off the beach and I got into this huge bluefin boil. They were like boiling out of Oceanside and they were everywhere. I mean, they've been here almost all year. I still see them in the fish count, people catching the bluefin. And honestly, that that's pretty rare. It, that's it typically doesn't happen here in San Diego. So next year, when next year comes around, you you never know. But I would say kind of that June cold water when it's transitioning, usually from spring to early summer, you'll get the bluefin. And then typically when it heats up, um middle of summer till even like early fall, you'll get the yellow fin. But this year was different. So, you, you know, it's hard to say. I think the yellow fin was a little tougher this year and the blue fin kind of stuck around. All in all, offshore was just, it was funky this year, man. And the yellow fin are tricky. I mean, the blue fin are tricky, uh, especially when they're the only fish out there. They don't want to bite. They're finicky. But they don't eat a lot of stuff. I mean, I probably got, I didn't get a bluefin all year except for a deckhand that gave me one. But I've casted probably in like 15 bluefin boils. Like actually seeing the huge boil of bluefin, I've cast in, I, I would say 15 boils and have not gotten a bite on a single bluefin this year. I mean, that's how finicky they can be. Other days it's on like Donkey Kong, man, and they're slaying, but that's typically what you could expect. Like I said, this year was kind of an anomaly. So if you're hearing um, what a lot of people are doing this year as far as the tuna go, that's not typically how it goes. But it might because the bluefin honestly haven't been here. I know Kevin Nakata was talking about this, that it's kind of a once in a generation thing. I think he was saying until like some years ago or maybe 10 years ago or something, like we used to not have bluefin at all. So then they've moved in like the last decade but who knows how long they're going to stay. So they used to never be here in San Diego. They've moved up for whatever reason. They've stuck around the last couple of years. Kind of Corvina or the same thing. Whether they disappear and never come back, who knows, man. It, it's I could say for the last little while, that's that's how it's been. Yellowfin always seem to come in. Yellowfin Dorado, those those tend to be staples. So if you want to get on tuna, you can get them. And then the skipjack, too. They come up with the um, yellowfin, typically. <clears throat> so I'm going out there uh early next week hopefully we can get on them some i'll i'll have the fish report for you guys obviously next thursday see if they're still biting but i've had my ass kicked mostly this year offshore it has not been not been easy a couple ahi but i mean that's about it tons of bonito and then unfortunately a lot a lot of rock fishing Let's see if i can catch up here hopefully that answered your question let's see here what's happening Which would be good for an or Oregonian to trek down for? Which fish or which time of year? I mean, if you just want to fish, I mean, just any fish, just hit the bays, man. And there's all kinds of fish. But yeah, if you plan to come down, man, just just let us know. I, I fish, like I said, I'm out there year round, so most of these guys are too. There's, there's, I think somebody fishing every single weekend. <laughs> I'd, I'd be surprised if there wasn't somebody going out. So. Probably if you want to go out any weekend, whether it's not myself, somebody's probably out here willing to, to go out with you, honestly. They're a pretty good group of guys. May get lucky and get a 200-pounder. Dude, I hope so, Cal. I've been seeing them, man. I've been on boats. We went on boats. I didn't see a 200-pounder, but they were definitely 100-pounders were coming up, dude. Crazy. You cast into a dodo school and got nothing, cave dog. Man, right? Even the dodos. We found a few of them this year too, and like I, we hooked one. We like found a little school. They just been finicky, man. This has not been the year. Some days it's like been epic. I've been seeing people just absolutely destroying it offshore, like for one day, and then it goes weeks, literally like two weeks where it's like one, two counts on the boat, and then there'll be like one day where it's like fifty fish for like twenty anglers, fifty tuna, and then it just dies. There's there just hasn't been that consistency where it's been. Some usually you get that month right where it's just every boat just goes out there and destroys it. It's been a it's been super rough. Dave Rage has been killing it though. It's a rough year. Yeah. So even Dave, dude, you know, 
Dave goes out there and crushes it. So if you're having a rough year, it, it has been a rough year. Definitely. Cal. That, oh, yeah, you went out with Cal, right? And how many did you hook out of that school? Which is because usually when you find the Dorado, man, they're – I mean, when I've seen it, we went out last year, and it was like they were swarming the boat, dude. It was crazy. It was so fun to watch. And it was like you could have dropped anything in there, and they would have bit it and took it off. They were jumping out of the water when they got hooked. It was, it was pretty cool. Just one of those years, man. I think that's what makes fishing awesome, though. You know, it's like it's never the same thing, and it's always – is this going to be the trip? You know, if you went out there and it was great every time, it would it'd kind of kill it. You know, you go and look for those epic days, but those are the ones that stick with you. And then you have like four kind of rough days. But I think even when you catch one or two fish, when it's been really rough, it's almost just as satisfying when you go out and catch like 20 fish, you know, because it's like you struggle so hard. And then when you get that bite, that bite on a struggling day is like, it's almost just as satisfying, at least for me. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but. I think that's what makes fishing great because even when you're starting to like, you know, you ever, you ever had those days where you question yourself if like, do I even know how to fish? <laughs> what am I doing? Like, if something's wrong, or where are the fish? And you go to these spots where you catch a hundred fish and there's nothing there. And then finally you get that bite and it might be just be the smallest ass little fish, but you're like, hell yeah, I can go in now. That's not true. I usually just stay out. Once I get one, I'm like, okay, one more bite. And then I end up staying out there like two hours later because I'm waiting until I get another fish. Let's see what we got here. Fresh, I put some questions in. Fresh one. Do you fish out of Oceanside Harbor? Um, I have. I haven't. <laughs> Fresh one. I live in Carlsbad, and I have not fished at Oceanside Harbor. I've gone out of plenty of sport boats from there. Um, like a lot, you know, out of uh, Hellgren's and then that other one. I know Hellgren's moved. I've been out of a uh, ton of the, ton of boats off of that, but I've never actually launched um, my kayak in the harbor of uh, Oceanside. I've thought about it a lot. Uh, I might as well. I, I it's like almost every weekend. I'm like last weekend too, and I was like, I think I'm gonna go to Oceanside Harbor. I honestly thought about it, and then I was like, uh, then Fish Perfect invited me on his boat, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna go on the boat, obviously. But like, yeah, Dana Point. I do. Uh, San Diego Bay is probably the number one. Uh, La Jolla is probably my number two. And then I do a lot of Mission Bay. And then Point Loma I do sometimes. Man, I even went off the Carlsbad surf, but I got to get out to Oceanside. I got to get out to Oceanside. You know, it's just like I'm so comfortable with San Diego Bay. Like I know I have spots in San Diego Bay where I'm like, I know I can catch fish. Sometimes that's kind of my default when I don't have anything to do. I'm like, Especially the bait barge. I'm like, I, I'll just go out there and absolutely destroy some sand bass when I've got like really nothing to do. But I, I got to get on the, the Oceanside Harbor. So hit me up if you want to go, man. I'd love to go out there. I need, because I've, I've never fished it. So I don't know what the spots are. Obviously, you can, I'm sure, just hit the docks for some spotties and stuff. But um, have you ever been out to, have you ever gone out like past the jetty in, in a kayak? I'm curious about that. We went out this year. Uh, on a sport boat, dude, and there was just like bluefin boils all over the place, just right off of there, right off the ocean side. Um, but there's some good rockfish spots there too. So I'm curious if you go actually go out there and um, slay some of the um, fish offshore outside the jetty. I'd be interested in that. It'd be nice to have that that option here to fish inside the docks and get outside the jetty. That's what's cool about Mission Bay. Uh, you can get outside that jetty pretty quick too. Let's see here. Mark G, they still swim around, but don't bother you. Just keep your catch and ask, catching your yak. Ask me about that. Yeah. Are you guys asking about this, the sea lions? He was asking if you were afraid of sea lions or sharks. Who? Martel. Martel, sea lions or sharks. Dude, I've got a long history with the, the California sea lion out here. I like to say I'm the victim of the sea lions. I do not harass the sea lions. They harass me. I had one. Uh, one. So you guys were running late. So I don't know if you guys want to go or if you just want me to keep talking to Levido. But um, one time um, I caught a, I was catching like barracuda like crazy. I think this day I caught like 30 barracuda and I caught one and I was like holding it up, trying to get off the hook. Dude, this sea lion damn near jumped in the boat. Like it came up so close. So I, I try to toss it. And it grabs the barracuda, like 
basically from my hand. My lure is still on the damn thing. And this thing just starts doing the head shake. It's flipping the barracuda everywhere. I lost my lure, like my $20 Lucky Craft stick bait. Just destroyed this thing, shook it off. Um, and that was like my first kind of encounter with the sea lion. We had it on video. Actually, if you look on Roman Castro's, I think, Twitch account, you can find it on there. Or some of the old videos. I don't know if he's got them archived, but um, we went out with him. And, you know, he's a YouTuber. Go follow him. And he actually all caught it on video. This was before I was YouTubing or anything. Um, and then another time, this was earlier in the year, I caught a legal halibut and I didn't have a bag with me. I didn't think I was going to catch a halibut. And I had it on, like, on, on a game clip, you know, where it goes to the gill. The gills are just a metal thing. It's clipped on the side of the boat. I was keeping it in the water to keep it cool since I didn't have the bag. Um, and we're swimming around and all day. I'm like, I'm watching for sea lions, right? Because I know that they'll come up and take it. And there was no sea lions around. We're fishing the docks. And we were with Cal. I think Cal was out with me. And he was, um, he hits me on the, the comms. And he's like, hey, you tell there's some sea lions behind you. So I look back. The second I look back looking for the sea lions, I hear that oh, my clip broke. One of the sea lions took my halibut off the side of the, the, the boat rocks it, right? Because it's like my cliff was tied to the boat. The boat like shakes. I see it go over. It took my legal halibut. It was like my 20, it was like 22, 23 inches. And the same thing. They just mock you with it. He just tossed it in the air, shook the hell out of it, ripped it to pieces. I don't even know if they eat the whole thing, but um, yeah, they just destroy it. But same thing when I fish sand bass, man. It's, I've got this thing for sea lions. They just, they like to hassle me. I don't know why, man. I'm good to them too. I bring them peace offerings, and they just give me no respect out there on the water. Eric says to submit one. Submit one. I will. Next sea lion comes around. It's getting a rear naked choke. I'm gonna put it to sleep right in front of all of its friends too. It's gonna learn a lesson. <laughs> I'm gonna send a message to the sea lion nation. We're done. Would PETA come after you for that? PETA? Yeah, I think they would. I think they're protected. I heard. Um, Someone told me they used to shoot sea lions back in the day. And I think it used to be legal. Like in the 70s, they were like, so these old timers were like, yeah, dude, they're coming to the boat. We just light them up. We just shoot them in the water. And because they're like a nuisance. And now I, they're protected, right? And you can't mess with them. Um, but you can't tell me sea lions are a problem now. I, you know, now, now that they're protected, they're all over the place. They shit all over the docks. Uh, they swarm. They harass. Whenever like the sport boats are out, they're a pain in the ass because. Whenever you're fishing, they come up like they're still yellowtail. And especially when you're at the bait barge and you see some of my videos where I'm horsing the fish up because I'm watching sea lions actually freaking dive off of the barge to go get your fish or they'll see you hooked. And yeah, you got to reel them up quick. They've taken, um, I heard of people's yellowtails getting jacked by sea lions, dude. It sucks. But they're just overrunning, man, dude. They're all over the place now. I think you go to some places in the beaches and they're just like, if taken over, they run the joint. I think they know they're protected, so they just they mock you. They sit there and just laugh at you because you can't do anything about it. Let's see. That talk about the National Geographic moment that sea lion, dude. Yeah, dude, that was crazy. It was like a Nat Geo. I should go back and find that video and play it on here. Man, that was wild though. And then it was like some girls on the boat or like that family, and they were like, "Oh my god!" It was pretty wild. They were loving it. Same here. Are you talking about um, you haven't been down to San Diego? Oh, you have not. Yeah, fresh one. So you live in San Marcos. Yeah, dude, we're out in. Um, I don't know if you've heard of us, but um, check out Fishy Hour. You can get a link to the Discord. I don't have the Discord link. Otherwise, I would give it to you guys. But um, follow uh, Fishy Hour on YouTube, uh, Roman Castro's channel. He usually gives out the Discord link. So if you guys want to join. That's uh, the MMFC, Mad Max Fishing Club. Uh, that's where we do a lot of our events. Um, I don't. It's not like an official club. It's not, right? It doesn't have like the, the license or whatever, or whatever you need. But it, it's just a group of guys, dude. Everybody's pretty cool. Um, but we got on fish. We're out there like every weekend. But if you need a partner or something like that, all these guys are really cool. Almost everybody in this chat. Um, you know, if you don't want to join or whatever, just hit me up in the comments or um, like a message on YouTube. I mean, I'll go out with you guys and we'll get a group together and at least, you know, figure out a weekend or something. So those of you guys that are new to it, I'm down to fish. 
down for some slow pitch jigging. They're a huge problem. Yeah, Zach, they are, dude. And then you can't do anything about it. Leonard, do you have a screen grab of the sea line of it? <laughs> you just send that to me. Post it in a Discord. I'll throw it on here, dude. That's hilarious. I'd love to see that. Bring back my PTSD. I thought that thing was going to jump in the boat, dude. Now I get came up in it. As far as the sharks go, I, I'm not too worried about the sharks. I mean, I, I've seen the leopard sharks um, down in La Jolla when they were spawning. They were like all over the place, but they don't really mess with you. Some guys have seen some great whites. I've, ne I've never seen one out there. Um, dolphins swimming under the boat. I've seen that. That's pretty cool. Uh, stuff like that. Sea lions stole your barracuda this summer. Zach, I'm telling you, man. At least it's just the barracuda. It wasn't like they jacked a yellowtail or anything. I'm down to go out and stay over by Liberty Station and try to fish daily. Yeah, dude. Martel, let us know, man. MMFC. Like I said, check out Fishy Hour. Get the link uh, to the Discord. That, that's how we um, we do it. And then we talk on Discord, too. So we talk on comms. Um, usually when there's a lot of us out there, that's how we, we stay in contact. Through Discord, the Discord app on our phones, we just join a uh, like a voice chat and then sometimes there's just one or two of us. Sometimes there's like literally 15 of us out there. Just depends what you do. But especially if we like set up a specific trip, it'd be cool. <clears throat> yeah. Jessica just put in the link to fishy hours. So check that out. There might even be the discord link in that description. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's too big. Yeah. I should get the link just so I can share it. Yeah. You want to do slow pitch? I watch a lot of the deer meat for dinner. That's what I like to his go to. Yeah, slow pitch is my thing. That's like, that's what I do. Is probably these days like ninety percent of the time. I mean, I slow pitch everything, man. You know what's? I, I, I don't even. I, don't get me started, guys. I'm just. I'll be talking like another hour. I was about to go into like a whole new, a whole new freaking topic or subject, but we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I like slow pitching. Um, that's like my main. That's my go to for pretty much everything. But um, we can talk about that in in a whole different video. We always got next week. Yeah, Mark G, Fishy Hour on Mondays and Wednesday nights live show. Yeah, yeah, you just subbed. Yeah, it's cool, dude. Watch that show because um, that link will go through, and then you can get the you get the inside um, inside scoop on everything we do. Well, anyways, guys, we're past. We're like an hour fifteen. Um, sorry, I held you guys so long. Thanks for joining, though, guys. Uh, awesome conversation. Love talking to you guys about fishing. Uh, if you guys have anything you want to see in the shows or any questions, you know, leave it in the comments or in my other videos you guys know how to get a hold of me i'll be out there fishing this weekend like i said i probably will join mark g i'm not definitive on that but probably go out there in mission bay um maybe go outside the jetty again look for some sheep's head like we did maybe i'll go to san diego glorietta i'm curious to see there's a couple things i want to look at as far as the spotties see where they're at um yeah i'm gonna try out some new baits go try some new stuff i mean kind of got the off season oh we got the Dude, we didn't even touch on the species challenge. I didn't even talk about how I lost my phone. There's too much going on, man. It's like there's, I lost my phone. On, I lost another $1,300 phone on a boat, fell out of my pocket. I won't get into that now. I should have hit that earlier, but finally got my replacement. Um, I got the species challenge challenge coming up, but um, yeah, I don't keep you, guys, keep you guys too long. I'll just be sitting here talking all day. Um, but yeah, but thanks for joining. Awesome seeing you guys. Hopefully you learned something. Um, like I said, if you've got questions or anything, let me know. Check out Fishy Hour. Um, they're like the – he was the the main show. The reason I started doing this one because he took less shows, so I picked it up. So go give them some love. We're trying to get him to 1,000 subs. And thank you guys for all the subs. So if you haven't subbed, sub to the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, trying to build this thing, move it up, uh, get some new subs every day, and I love you guys. Uh, every little one helps. And um, thanks for all the love. Thanks for the likes. Um, check out – submissionfishing.com if you guys want to support me i've got like um stickers like on this little logo i've got shirts um stuff like that i sense i sell fish frosting for those of you guys that don't know some of you new guys i do make um my own fishing scent i make it in small batches it's called fish frosting uh, if you want to buy a can of that use it it works um it's good stuff i use a uh, bait infused with salt and uh, i got some other stuff other stuff in the works and uh, I appreciate all the support for those of you guys that have bought anything, you know, click the links. Uh, just even if you just like the video or you guys subscribed, it means a lot to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. 
And we'll see you on the next one. See you guys out on the water. Oos.